All right, jumping into round three. I won the die roller again. This is my champion. It is very me, so I like that. Uh, I will keep this. I guess the question is, do I want to? I want to hold up spell pierce. I think it's very useful to hold up spell pierce in. That's going to get very annoying. Um, in the early turns of the game, like against like a chalice deck, it's really nice to have. Um, question is, do I want to play C or Misty? C is much worse to wasteland. Um, but I guess I have three looks off of brainstorm, and then two more looks off of a Misty to find another land with this period name. So I think we'll do that and preserve our fetch. Definitely a bit of a risk. Um, I think the mana in this deck is a little more um, bad. <laughs> a little more bad um, than decks I'm used to playing. So I think I just will have to be in these risky situations a little more often. All right, well, it was Eldrazi. Good to know. Uh, I'm going to brainstorm end step. Only one of these is... It's both good and bad. Um, means there's likely to be a Thought on Seer in our future. I think Drown Lock is just really bad against these decks because... Um, they rarely put cards in the graveyard. Might have been better than Spell Pierce. That's actually reasonable. I probably should have shuffled away the Spell Pierce. There's some chance that Drown can kill something. All right, so I think we're just going to play Strix and I'll pass the turn. Better than pre-reading for something. I'm just trying to figure out what land I want to use. I still think I don't want the Drown, so I'm fetching away. I think this just gets Tundra, and then the Vista can fetch a basic forest. Second out goes not bad. I think I trade here. Your life total is a resource. If they play Smasher next turn, I probably would trade with the Mimic again anyway. And now we have a tough decision. We can preordain maybe to find something to do, or we can play Oko, make a food token. That's really bad against Reality Smasher is kind of like the main issue with that line, but I'd have to find some very specific things to not be bad against Smasher, so I think we're just going to go for it. Really not much you can do there, is what it is. All right. Even though I have this abrupt decay, it kind of sucks against my opponent's board, so I think I'm going to 
give myself the option to draw swords to pleasures. That would have been really nice last turn. All right, game's over. Yeah, that was just a really good draw from our opponent and a really bad draw from us. Okay, this card's good. I think this card's good because it can hit thought not. Ooze is okay. Obviously, we want the back to basics. It does kind of suck that, like I said, our mana's not great, so sometimes it will hurt us a little bit, but it's fine. Yeah, so these cards kind of suck, and then maybe like one force negation is fine, but in general, it captures a very small. Uh, section of spells. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this. Obviously, we have some real clunkers here. Like, uh, I guess this can hit Chalice. Um, yeah, okay, so sometimes Decay sucks, but I think the fact that it can hit Chalice. Um, and, like, there are Endless Ones. Gives it the nod. Spell Center is fine. They play Chalice and they play um, the other two mana thing that has the Thalia attacks effect. All right. See, is there anything we want over this Leovold? Leovold kind of is not great. Maybe it is the third decay? Like, Leovold just lines up so poorly against other guys. The guys are just bigger. All right, yeah, and they don't draw cards. All right, uh, this is a keep. Gonna hold up brainstorm on turn one. Definitely brainstorming and stuff here. You know, mana efficiency is very important in these matchups. You have to develop early or else they'll run you over. So I want to convert these into lands and cards and etc. Wonder what they were thinking about. They must have like an endless one in hand and are deciding if they It might be a little slow. And are deciding if they want to. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. I think just a bunch of removal is fine. Uh, if they wanted to cast it on two or wait till next turn to cast it for four. Um, with that in mind, I think I'm going to hold up both push and swords and just clear their board. And then next turn, I can you know, play Astrolabe. And play a Strix.
I think they have a okay, so they exiled two spirit guides. Oh, they did they undid that. Uh they definitely have a reality smasher and wanted to make it uncounterable, but this takes off generic mana, not colorless, so if they want to cast their smasher, they will need to tap this for colorless mana. It's nice to know that they have two spirit guides in hand though. So two spirit guides, smasher, and then two unknowns. I still think endless one could be a possibility. They figured it out. Um. Alright, I think I just kill both their things. Play Strix onto an empty board. Question is what to discard. It's either Astrolabe or Brainstorm. I think that given that we have three of our four colors, you can make an argument for Astrolabe. Um, but green is such an important part of the game plan. I'm just gonna... that I think Astrolabe is fine. Also, we can't even cast these Strixes as it stands because we need to get a basic. So I think that Labe gets the nod here. Also a reasonable pickup. I mean, it's, it's okay. They have the cavern, but. Teferi is a very good pickup. Just resets what they do. We are building up to Orion, which looks like it might be good in this game. Okay. Oh, I guess I could counter it because they didn't use the right mana, but. I'm going to act as though I couldn't counter it. I also probably would not want to anyway. I kind of just want to build up my mana for uh, for this Urian. Is it crazy to just play Teferi, bounce Astrolabe? Like, what am I scared of? They can play Smasher. I don't know. We'll take some damage, but... It's not the end of the world. It's also a good pickup. That's probably better than playing an Astrolabe. So I play this killer thing. Next turn, play Astrolabe plus Strix. And then the turn after, I play Orion and potentially draw three cards. That seems good to me. If they just attack, I'm going to Swords. Because I don't want them to get the card off the top. And preserving Strix for Urine draws. Good. Yeah. All right. So then have another Smasher, which is nice. I'm trying to think of cards I'd be scared of. There aren't too many.
I don't know what's happening, but I'm enjoying it. These cards are all very good, but I really just want to hit my fifth land. Um, I think they're just too good to pass up though. I am going to start attacking. They all draw cards, so you know. I'm sure, you know, seeing three new cards will find me a land. Just a small sequencing thing. It's nice to cast this cantrip first um, before you cast Uro, just because it increases the chance that you find a land you can put into play with it. Probably won't matter too much here. Okay, packing it in. Don't want any changes. These back to basics are just gonna be so awkward, aren't they? Maybe this mana, dex mana base needs to be reworked. It's certainly possible. The white is kind of a small splash. You could consider removing it and just like change these for maybe like Fatal Push or something or play more Decays. But one mana is just so strong to just, you know, kill anything, no questions asked. It's just a very strong effect. So hard to say. This is the first draft of the deck for, um, for those wondering. And it does play basically six duels. But I figured it was a 20, you know, 80 card deck is not something I have too much experience with. So I wanted to err on the side of, you know, being able to cast my spells. I think I have to keep this, it has two Strixes. Mana's a little funky right now, missing two colors, but hopefully Ponder can find that. So ponder, hopefully we find black mana. That's frustrating. I don't think I can keep that. It's just, yeah, not being able to cast four cards in my hand is too many, or five, sorry, because I would be drawing. Yeah. Uh, that's actually a very nice pickup. Next time I get to play Kawadal, you know, worst comes to worst. What will we pitch? Either Strix or Oko. It's probably Strix. Oko is very good. Even if we need to land. The nice thing about Oko is any land lets us cast him, whereas we specifically need to find black mana to cast Strix. So that you can kind of look at both of them as three mana plays right now, since we don't have the mana to cast Strix. God, I think I have to let that go. It would just suck a lot if you know, they had a Smasher follow up. And I don't think they would sandbag a cavern, because it's like, why would you? Yeah, 
The nice thing about Force 2 is that if I force their play for the turn, then this Coatl can trade with the Mimic, because it won't get a toughness bonus. I think sandbagging a cavern would be a very high level play. Like you would have to think that you're playing around a force your opponent has and understand their play patterns and think that they would not force your battery shaper. And given that my opponent, I don't know. Hmm. Right, well, let's see what happens. I still think I want to pitch Baleful Strix. Okay, okay. So I could play Oko plus. I could play Ponder, hold up to K. Could play Snap Ponder. I kind of want white mana so I can bring back these things, you know. Snap kind of trades with uh, Reshaper the same way Decay does. All right, yeah, I'm going to snap ponder. The nice thing about this is even if they do have a smasher, those are probably good enough, huh? Let's think. So next turn I get to... That's so close. Once again, the mana is just really, really rough in this deck. Might have too many basics. Hard to say. Anyway, um, okay, let's think. So we can play Strix. Strix is a good card. Uh, we have a land. We can ponder. It's probably good enough. All right, let's just do that. And then hopefully later on we can find white mana to bring back the Strix again. All right, found the cavern. At this point, it's fine. We don't have forces. Also, even if I don't blink anything with it on five mana, I can always just cast a four five, which lines up well against everything except for Smasher. So these are too slow. G 
Jeez, the problem with unearth here is that it doesn't let me cast two spells in one turn. So I could bring back Snap and use it to ponder. I can bring back Quaddle. Let's see what I draw. Next turn, what am I doing? Kind of in the same problem next turn, huh? All right, I'm going to... A very difficult decision. I'm kind of just dead to land smasher, aren't I? Not much I can do about that. What's the best possible thing I could do about that? Maybe snap ponder? No, what am I looking for? Just like black mana, so I can Strix plus Decay the next turn. I don't know. All right, let's make a play. I think back to basics we'll have to wait because we're kind of just dead on the board as is. <laughs> Again, that is not how that works. <laughs> it's very good as a last card for, or an other card for them to have. It means they just drew it though, so they still could have a second smasher in hand. Man, I'm so close to stabilizing, huh? All right, if I go to four, then I play Strix and Plague Engineer. Yeah, I think I don't want them to draw a creature they can play this turn, so I'm going to trade with this, and then next turn look to trade off things. And then after that, play Oko and stuff like that. Yeah, back to basics doesn't cut it here. Does it? They don't have Smasher. They can play this, back to basics. No, I, I think it's just a little safer too. To kill their card and have a second Death Touch blocker on the field. I am dead to a smasher off the top, but it was... Okay, very little I could do to play around that. I think this is just the best line in general. Oh, 
They're also getting close to dead, huh? Don't know how relevant that will be. Uh, definitely trading. We'll see what they reveal. Elvish Spirit Guide. Can they put that on? Yeah, they can put that on the battlefield. It is a creature. An interesting application, indeed. All right, so I think here I am just Oh no. Ah. Uh, I don't have double green. Everything's awful. Um Jeez. Maybe I just play a 4 5 here. That's better than gaining 3 life, isn't it? Yeah. It also blocks Smasher because Smasher is a 4 4. That's pretty gas. Feels like a giant endless one, but we'll see. Nice. I think this is the turn we back to basics. And probably just attack for four in the air, huh? We can decay one of the things. I can't think of a draw step that would stop us. So green, black, this can fetch Tundra. So I can decay plus swords. All right, yeah, I think we just win. I'm just going to block the endless one and decay the spirit. They can't dismember. Actually, let's just do this first. I don't think it matters, but. Nice, okay, so despite just rampant mana problems, we were able to pull out that game. 
So I think I'm starting to get a sense that um, this deck might need a few more cantrips for a consistency issue. It feels like we have a, you know, let's, can't move these out of the way because it's a deck view, but we have 13 three drops, which in an 80 card deck is not too many, but I think given that they are all so many different colors, it might be better to cut like one or two and just add an extra preordain or two. Um, just because it does feel like we need a lot to be going right as far as our mana is concerned. Um, and maybe turning things into a little bit more consistency uh, might be what you want. You know, having this extra, you know, card as your top end for some late game, you know, oomph, I think means that you don't have to go so heavy into, you know, all these extra card advantage engines. Um, so yeah, I think that's my takeaway so far. The deck seems fun. The deck seems powerful. We're two and one. Um, I'm going to hop into the fourth round now. Um, but definitely I think the mana is the biggest thing that is, you know, sticking out to me as a pain point. Um, you know, just getting to see your astrolabes, you know, less often in your four color deck will definitely uh, hurt your consistency in that aspect. Especially when you have so many, you know, color intensive spells and a lot of basics. Which I think is still correct because you play the Astrolabes, you play the Quaddles, you play the Back to Basics on the sideboard. Um, and it's nice to play around Wasteland when you can. But yeah, definitely something to consider. All right. Have I won every die roll so far? I think I might have. All right, uh, hands a keep. I'm going to lead on this. It's gonna take a while for that to not be funny to me. Just the idea of Watsy thinking you would want to see this card every time you start your game. I'm not going to bring this from here. I don't know what I want yet. I have no idea what my opponent is playing. Um, and other than cantrips, I don't have too much impactful things to do on my next turn anyway. So I'm just going to hold up this decay. Hold up this brainstorm. My opponent passes again. I'm very unsure of what I will be doing. Okay. Could be a learn. Could be some bug mid-range thing. Uh, I still think I don't want to brainstorm yet. I probably won't mind hitting my fifth land. Um, Oof. Yeah. Well, it does kind of help me escape the arrow a little faster. You know, if I brainstorm and find 
a fetch land, I can do it this turn. All right, there we go. Um, this draws an extra card with the guy. So I think Brainstorm goes back. Maybe Seven's Rack is a little too much right now. I guess the question is how important is Decay? I don't know. <laughs> it's still hard to know exactly what they're on. They could be playing things like Oko, which Decay would be pretty good against. Um, so I think, given that I have Orion, I'm going to put this back and uh, fetch a Tundra. Um, blue, blue, green, green. One, two, three, five. And then if my opponent force it wills this. I feel like we're about even in the game. They'll have one more card in hand, but we have more lands in play. Okay, so um, that's good for us. I'm going to start with this. Obviously, they're looking to block with their Baleful Strix. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, since we already have the swords, we're going to attack first. Um, and then before blocks. I actually think I'm going, am I going to keep this in there? I have so much value coming up. Yeah. All right. I'm going to play this. Before blocks, I'm going to Swords the Strix. And you definitely want to attack first because say they have something like Abrupt Decay, you want to get your card draw in first before they know that Baleful Strix is dying here. Uh, sure. I guess the question is, do I want to play around Veil of Summer? I think keeping around the Uro is very valuable, so... All right, awesome. Force of Will is really good here, too. The one thing I'm really scared about is Aloran, so... Would a learn play counterspell though? Would any deck play counterspell though? That's the real question. So it's very hard to know exactly what the opponent is on. I just would expect to see more basics if they were on like a four color snow pile or something like that.
drown in the lock. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We're just going to get so much value over the next couple turns. We're doing it. The old, not a card in your hand, draw three. If they force this, whether or not I force back is actually an interesting question. I think the answer might be no. Uh, just because I have an arrow in the yard. So it's not like I need this to resolve to feel like I'm in the game. And if I chase the mind sculptor, would that be in Warren? God, probably not. Could be playing overly cautious here, but I just feel like I'm so far ahead that I'm not likely to lose. All right, we'll let it get countered. And next turn, we'll just plan to escape arrow again. I don't think it makes sense to force this. It's not like we want to keep the swords. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh well. Opponent's also only on eight. Ooh. A Valk. Alright, so... When you can, you want to... Swords the arrow the first time around, um, because they're going to get it out of the graveyard anyway. So at this point, it's just like one fewer cards for them. I know I did just complain about keeping the swords in hand, but uh, I didn't know they were going to follow up with the arrow. Let's ponder first. I don't think it matters, but it's nice to all right, one, two, three, four. All right, so let's let's draw the arrow. So it's the two counter spells are safe from discard, or at least the one counter spell, the force of will is. Don't think it matters what we get rid of. I have no way to recur Orion from my graveyard in this deck. Um, so once it's gone, it's gone. Now we have access to both forces. Great place to be. I uh, will play this so that we actually just can hard cast both of them. It's always a good feeling to have as many force of wills as your opponent has cards in hand. I must say. 
Right, so let's let's um take this time to analyze how good Urian was because it was kind of a zero mana two for one, but it was a game we were already very ahead in, which makes it hard to evaluate. I think they are just like a four color no white control deck. Uh, just double him, Jace, Counterspell. It's too many non-creature spells, at least in my view. So I'm going to board like it is that. Um, which means I think these are what I want. Trim down on forces. Um, trim down on swords. And that's kind of it. Yeah, I feel like this has to be a good matchup for us, huh? Plague Engineer. I think one of the Plague Engineer is fine because it can name like their Baleful Strix or something, um, which can clear the way for attackers. I am not super high on Decay in these mirror matches. I think you want some, but not like too many, just because usually once you're if you're decaying something, it has already gotten value, um, and it plays into Veil of are very hard. Um, so I like leaving. I think two is fine here. All right. We're going to run this. This should be, in theory, a good matchup for us. You know, we're both playing these value games, and um, my deck is just going over the top and always has eight cards in hand to start. Uh, hand seems fine. You're basically trying to never mulligan in these matchups. The games go so long, and the contents of your opening hand are just so unimportant in most games. Obviously, having like Force of Wills are nice, but I think that in general, it's not worth mulliganing to find. My opponent has mulliganed. I'm sure they just had like an Atlanta or something. Choose it to not shuffle. Okay. Okay. Play engineer is looking good. So what do I want to do here? Play Plague Engineer, get my insta value. One thing I'm a little worried about is Leovold. Um, obviously he doesn't have it now, but I think it's something that, you know, you should be prepared for. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think we can just shuffle away two lands. Uh, 
Uh, and again, kind of because of this, I'm just going to... So blue, black, so we need green and white, technically. Um, so we'll get tropical. I'm just going to play the Strix now because Kawadal can be played in my opponent's end step to play around the old. We are also uh, working up to this Urian just being a huge um, you know, burst of cards, which is great. Bird. It's a bird. If they attack, I'm not blocking. Um, if they follow up with a Planeswalker, I want to have a creature around to pressure it. And also, you know, potentially an extra card with Orion. Haha! -ha, okay. I think we are going to do what our opponent did. The nice thing about Quaddle is, uh, I believe it's a snake and not a bird. Uh, right? Yeah. All right. I'm just going to ponder. Flusterstorm is a little bit better at protecting your threats. They can hit him through a Flusterstorm right now, anyway. So, uh, the Tundra, we will not want. The arrow, we will. We're going to protect it from discard and call it a day. Huh. Okay. During each of your turns, you may cast an instant or source spell from your graveyard, and then you get to exile it instead. And they're not. Uh, huh. Okay. I think I want to start attacking here. They trade, I'm okay with it. I'm gonna fetch away the tundra. I think I have enough lands. I will fetch the tundra though. Uh, and then it's going to play out this Uro. Uh, this does expose it to Grave Heat a little bit. Um, and so maybe you could argue that I should have waited a turn. Um, but I think that developing your mana is pretty important in these um, sorts of matches. And again, I'm just not starved for value right now at all. Uh, yeah. Like, and that's a little annoying, you know, but the Uro drew a card and the Kling did not. Um, and I think if they attack with the Kess, we'll try to trade with Coatl. If they don't, we'll just Coatl and then plan to draw three next turn with Flusterstorm and Veil of Summer back up, uh, which I think will be hard to beat. So yeah, I would like to. Hmm. Bolt. 
Clustering that plays into Veil pretty hard. Huh. I think it's fine here to do this. I just think getting rid of their cast will be very valuable. <laughs> oh boy. And see, this is fine. This is just like a you know a one for one trade uh, with the fluster storm, which is about what you generally get out of it. Gonna yield to this turn. Oh no. Oh my part my opponent must have targeted. The trigger is wrong. Oh, that's brutal. Because obviously in paper it'd be very easy. You just put one on one. But they must have clicked wrong somewhere. You know, this is kind of a for fun exhibition match. I'm trying to show off a new deck. I'm going to pretend like this Kawadal just isn't in play. Um, definitely not something I would do, you know, in a bigger event, um, where the prizes matter, but, um, you know, it's very clear what the opponent wanted to do. And, you know, we're not trying to win games. We're trying to explore a new strategy and also have some fun. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll do. All right. So we can start by attacking cause it's free. Uh, let's think one, two, three, four, five. Seven. So I'm going to ponder first just because we'll have enough to play this and hold up. I actually want the swords here just to kill. Uh, kill cast. So I'm going to start by attacking with the 2 2. Because we can reset it and give it vigilance. We could even name a different thing if we wanted to. Wizard might not be bad. It wouldn't be crazy to think that the opponent has Snapcaster Mage and turning the 3-4 into a 2-3 does, you know, reduce their clock. So obviously if they fight over this, we're going to veil. If they don't, uh, we are going to... Um, Oh, done. Yeah. Uh, if they don't, we're going to swords. And it, this is just a technically correct sequencing thing. We're going to draw our cards um, first. I think I'm actually just going to name bird still. Uh, we're going to draw our cards first to... Um, before we swords, which even though we know the cards, it's still just a strictly correct thing to do. Uh, I'll tell my opponent in chat. Uh, just, you know, just so they know, so they don't have to like think like, oh, if I attack, like, will he block, etc., etc. 
I don't think it matters in this game for what it's worth. Oh, that's hilarious. This is a bird, so it's getting minus one, minus one from plague. So the only thing you could argue we have to worry about here is our life total, but 13 is pretty high. We have this Oko. Again, it feels very hard to tell if Orion was a really good card here that you know pulled us pretty far ahead, or if it's just a win more card, but in a game we were already ahead in. It feels like we were kind of about even there, though. You know, we both had a plague engineer in play. That's fine. Um, They left up red instead of green, so they're likely to have a pyroblast effect. That's one thing to think about, though, is that if it feels like Orion is frequently a win more card, we might want to configure our deck so that it's like has some less late game power in sure uh, inside of it because we know we always have this boost outside um, you know maybe we don't need things like seven's rack or three to fairies um, things like that let's brainstorm Don't need an extra land. We can make do without a second Oko. Gonna ponder. Not quite sure what I'm looking for. I don't think I need these. I think I just want four syllables. Um all right, so let's play Oko. Won't pay for spell pierce. I'm actually going to do this so that it kind of incentivizes them to trade off their Plague Engineer, and then we can just play a Baleful Strix. Um, letting their Oko survive for one turn just really doesn't matter. Chase obviously is nowhere near good enough here. Which I think is becoming more and more often the case with this card. I think that in a world of Okos and Leovolds and Narsets and Uros, you know, there's just 
so many good ways to get card advantage that are cheaper or play to the board or stop the opponent from brainstorming. Um, I'm going to elk this. So this will attack Jace, this will attack oh, Oko, this will attack Oko. And I kind of don't need to do anything anymore. I can just hold up Force Negation, Snap Force Negation, and probably just like easily win the game from there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to lie, I don't want to elf you actually, just because I don't want to think about my mana requirements right now. I suppose the only thing I would be missing is double black, which I haven't dealt for. I'm sure. So we can snap foster that. My flush is just much easier than my opponents. Uh, I just have to put them all on veil. Uh, and yeah, we got there. So it seemed very convincing, um, which I'm not too surprised by, just given how I constructed the deck. Uh, again, it leads me to believe I probably want a little less grind. Um, because the more grind you add, the worse your, you know, a lot of your other matchups tend to get um, because you're you know, have less stuff to face them. Uh, that being said, we're 3-1, so let's jump into our fifth round and see if we can snag the nice 4-1. Alright. So, Hollywood MK, he usually is playing Doomsday. Uh, which will be tough for this deck. Hard to decide what to do here. Obviously, you want interaction for Doomsday, but um, we have a lot of cantrips. I'm going to keep this. I think just with so many cantrips, we're likely to find things. This might be too loose. We might, you know, need our cantrips to find lands and counter magic. So it's possible we should have mulliganed. To be quite honest, I am not very good at playing against Doomsday, so... So it generally is difficult for me to... You know, be comfortable with mulliganing unless I feel confident that, you know, I have a strategy uh, in doing so. Um... Third land is fine. Um, we're going to cantrip twice next turn, and then on the next turn, play Oko. I think Oko's like okay in this matchup just because, uh, you know, Doomsday does lose them a good amount of life, so sometimes you can, you know, race before they. before they can uh, win the game. It's usually not how it happens, but you never know. I think these don't do anything. Teferi would be good if I already had counter magic, um, because then they couldn't counter back. But as it stands, I'm going to shuffle my library. An excellent draw.
Do I want the fourth land? Right, so next turn I play Oko. Hmm. Turn after that, I can see myself going double Strix. Or do we just want to try and keep finding Force of Wills? I think we're going to bottom it. There's some chance we draw land anyway. Um, and I'm kind of... Since I'm kind of indifferent to drawing a fourth land or not, I'm okay with bottoming it. Hmm. It feels like I have to force this just because... Yeah. Because it will turn off both my forces, and if they just tick up... Sure. If they just tick up... Um, then I can't really... Use my mana at all. Or use my forces at all. Okay, so. I said I was going to play Oko. Might just be better to cantrip twice, because then because Oko doesn't present any damage this turn, so it would start doing things next turn. But if I play Strix and Astral Labe this turn, then next turn I can play Oko, Elk the Strix or the Labe, and start doing damage. So either way, Oko is taking a turn to get ready. So I kind of just like um. Cantripping twice now. If I don't draw a blue card off of this, I will have to seriously consider not playing the Strix. I think this is... This might be... Oh my god. I'm so bad at this. This might be silly, but I'm going to do this, and then if bad things happen, I do at least have... The Oko to pitch. I guess it would not have mattered. Yeah. That's actually interesting that they took the Oko. Why would they do that? Because now I can just bring it back with sevens. Okay. I think they realized they messed up and should have taken the force. I don't know. All right. Maybe they went to fetch and realized they forgot a card in the deck. I don't know what happened there. Um, it feels like I should call that a you know draw. Um, either way, depending on how you want to look at it, 3-1-4-1, not bad. Um, deck seemed like it had some promise, uh, like I've been saying during the games. It also feels like um, there's room for improvement. Um, so with that in mind, I will, you know, go back to the drawing board and probably come back with a version two soon. Um, hope you guys all enjoyed. Um, if there are any Ikoria cards you're looking to brew with, especially in Legacy, definitely let me know in the comments. I'm excited for this new set. Hope you all are too. Bye guys.